Mm -hmm. So last night we heard all about this town hall that Oprah was going to have. She wanted to bring out Kamala Harris, and she wanted to introduce her to a town hall and take some questions from the people. Uh, I had this little bet with Bill Hemmer, who joined me on radio, and Bill says she grew up a journalist before she was a talk show host. Right. She's going to ask real questions. <laughs> uh, Bill, you owe me money, uh, because <laughs> there were no real questions. There were just saves. She was a lifeguard. She could have been on She's Baywatch. She's press secretary. She could have been on Baywatch, saving people from uh, one person from uh, a political death, because she kept trying to get her to answer a question, but she also opened it by setting the tone by saying this. By going out of her way saying, well, something changed with you the minute yeah. Joe Biden stepped out. What was it? Well, I'm the just. The veil dropped. Yeah, the veil dropped. Really? I haven't seen the veil drop yet. And she said, suddenly she felt a certain responsibility. And that's the kind of the way it went. Yeah. You know, celebrities. Oprah Winfrey is perhaps one of the preeminent talk show hosts of American television history. And so, you know, keep in mind, she has been an independent uh, politically. The only time she really got behind any candidate was in 2007 with Barack Obama. No one thinks she's she, independent. She really pushed him at that point, and she stayed to the side. We haven't really seen, we never saw her at a convention endorse anybody until this summer when she put everything she's got behind Kamala Harris. Yeah, I don't know how you host a town hall type format for two hours after you essentially gave a political endorsement of a candidate. Uh, well, we know whose side she's on. On the stage. The, she used to work, uh, represent that working class woman appealing to the issues that matter to them. So th she had an opportunity, a question was asked, to press her on this question right here. Watch. We really would love to know what your plan is to help lower the cost of living. Yeah, I, first of all, thank you both for being here. And yours is a, a story I hear around the country as I travel. And um, in terms of both rightly having the right to have aspirations and dreams and ambitions for your family and working hard and finding that the American dream is for this generation and so many recently, far more elusive than it's been. And we need to deal with that. And there are a number of ways. One is bringing down the cost of everyday necessities, including groceries. So that's why I'm taking on, for example, price gouging, um, which is when you know most companies and corporations are good, but for those bad ones, they take advantage of people, especially during a pandemic or extreme weather, and they end up jacking up prices. You know what I realize? It's, it, the truth doesn't matter because uh, the truth is inflation is high. That's why prices are up mm -hmm. under Barack. I mean, under Barack, under um, Biden, and under Kamala Harris's uh, presidency. And interest rates are high. They did go down, you know, 50 basis points, but not as low as they were under Donald Trump when they were 2.44 percent. People can't have the American dream like they used to under President Trump. But if they, they hate Donald Trump so much that they put on these shows, they bring in all these celebrities, which I don't think helps. I think actu actually it hurts. Julia Roberts, uh, she zoomed in, Brian Cranston, Chris Rock, Meryl Streep, um, and others as well. And those are the coastal elites. Those are the celebrities that no one can relate to. Oprah's a billionaire. You know, people in that audience behind her are struggling because of, of these high prices. It's all smoke and mirrors, though. This is all propaganda to make you think that Kamala Harris is going to be a great candidate. Meanwhile, if you look at her voting record, she is so progressive. She wants to take money from hardworking Americans right. so that everyone's equal, at, everyone makes the same amount of money. But look at her response, though. I mean, every time she speaks, I, I leave dizzy. She's just speaks Take in circles. So long. And, I mean, like, it's one thing that I, I cannot stand. Make your point and get out of yeah. it. Just one, two, move. Right. And she just doesn't <laughs> have the ability to just let us know Point A, right. point B, this is what I'm going to do. And Make your life better and move on. Keep in mind, she has the job already. If she knew how to bring prices down, she would have done it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Number two is the price gouging. She's shown no proof of any price gouging. And she took at least a minute and a half to get to price gouging. Right. I understand acknowledge the question and answer the question.
but you're acknowledging the question because you have no answer to the question. That was it. So it was so right. tedious to watch. And then you think when the celebrities came on, they would say something. I know it's crazy. They would say something of substance. Oh, they says, I feel joy. I feel happy now. You know what? That is more of a hit on Joe Biden. Well, I'm so glad Joe Biden is not going to be Rock president. Said, I want to be able to take my little girls to the White House to meet the mm -hmm. first female black right. president. Right. And I'm like, well, you're a celebrity. You have that opportunity yeah. to go to the White House and take your little girls. Yeah, meanwhile, the don't. other black kids are struggling, can't read and write in many of our communities, have to deal with the illegals that's taking over the communities, the rec centers and all that. So all these people have the luxury to have joy because the economy is not impacting them on the same right. level. Well, the, the whole idea behind this is because Kamala Harris uh, and uh, Donald Trump are only going to do the one debate. She's not really going to do any interviews, uh, you know, with real news people, although uh, you made the point, or, or Brian, you made the point with Bill Hammer. Uh, she used to be a reporter. She was a reporter in Baltimore. Um, but she was there as an activist to try to prop her up. Because what the campaign is trying to do is they're trying to get the people who are persuadable. Right now, according to the new Fox News poll, the people who support Trump and Kamala Harris, only 1% of them are movable. But there are, there's a tiny little sliver in the middle that are undecided. And that's why they're trying to do this. It's unconventional because this was all streaming. Uh, so it's, they're obviously going after kids who watch everything on the phone. Uh, the New York Times just dropped a story that says, and this goes to the point about how important your phone is and the online stuff. The week of the debate, the Kamala Harris campaign outspent Trump 20 to 1 buying ads on Facebook and Instagram. The whole idea was to say, essentially, we've got a lot of money and we're going to try to get the message out. She's this. And so they're presenting a certain image and there's a lot of feelings, but not a lot of facts. Oh. So she also talked about something else. Yeah, she talked about, um, the, we know she has a gun. She said that when she was asked about the mandatory buyback thing at the debate. You want to buy back everyone's guns? You're going to make everyone turn over their, their guns? And she said, no, no, no. Tim has guns, her, her vice president, and I have a gun. So right. we learned more about that, that and what she plans to do with her gun if someone breaks in her house. Listen. I'm a gun you... owner. Tim Walls is a gun. I did not know that. <laughs> if somebody and I thought that breaks in my house, they're getting shot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, I hear that. I hear that. Probably should not have said that. <laughs> But my I, staff will deal with that later. Yeah. <laughs> they deal with everything. They always clean up the mess. This whole campaign that, has been run it. by a staff. But even so Oprah, who's been genuine, genuine go, she I goes, agree. I did not know that. No one knows that you've been district attorney, you've been attorney general, and you've been sent. There has been no ads ever cut of Kamala, Kamala Harris saying that she has a gun. Well, well she has, has talked in the past about uh, guns and talked about the need to keep it in a safe place. Let's listen to the DA, Kamala Harris, talk about what happens, uh, what police should be doing for gun owners. Watch. We're going to re require responsible behaviors uh, among everybody in the community. And just because you legally possess a gun in the sanctity of your locked home doesn't mean that we're not going to walk into that home and check to see if you're being responsible and safe in the way you conduct your affairs. Okay, so that was then. Just barge into your house. Just barge in. and, and this is now. So uh, last night she talked about how she and the vice presidential candidate, uh, Tim Waltz, both have guns. Uh, interesting tidbit. Apparently, Tim Waltz is doing debate prep. And do you know who is preparing him? Playing... Buttigieg. Buttigieg, exactly. And who did Buttigieg work up before? Worked with Kamala Harris when it was time to debate Mike Pence. I think her flip-flops just show she knows she has to be more of a moderate. Mm -hmm. She has to paint herself more as a moderate. We know she's not. We know she's progressive. Bernie Sanders says she's progressive. She's just being pragmatic so that she can win this election. She is not a moderate. Look at her voting record. I think now she's saying tax on no tax on tips because she stole that from Donald Trump. She knows that that was a winning message, especially for Nevada and people that work in the industry, food industry and beverage in industry. Then she also said mandatory buyback on your guns. Then she flip-flopped on that to sound more like President Trump. You can keep your guns. In fact, I have a gun. And then she said, no fracking. Now she's saying you can frack, sounding like Donald Trump. And then here she's saying, if you break in my house, I'll shoot you, yeah. like a lot of Americans yeah, would do. But it's also but, such, it's such nonsense. First of all, she has Secret Service, okay? 
All right, that, that, they're going to be the people that are, like, don't pretend to the American people. You think people at home really think that Kamala Harris is going to be the person wielding the gun or, if someone breaks in her? Hopefully they do a better job than they've been doing with Donald Trump, though, and they stop the person from even going doing the perimeter. Right. So I, I just don't believe her. Right. Uh, I like to know the gun. How well she trained with the gun? Because you got to learn to train with the gun. You can't just have a gun, I thought, uh, the responsible thing to do. A couple of things. Well, uh, there's a story in Politico today that says that she does not talk about manufacturing in those blue states, in Michigan, in Ohio, and in uh, Pennsylvania, and that could be a huge detriment. The other problem she's having is, you know those uncommitteds that showed up not to vote for Joe Biden, mm -hmm. to vote uncommitted? Uh, they have not committed to vote for Kamala Harris. Oh. They said they have not gotten the answers that they want, and that could affect in, area, in Michigan, in Arizona, in North Carolina, and Wisconsin. Now, you have no uncommitted line. You could just leave it blank, but uh, there is an uncommitted line in Nevada. So if, you don't, if you're going to say, if you're angry about the Israeli-Gaza situation and are not happy uh, with her agreeing to an embargo, you are staying with uncommitted. Well, that is a huge boon for President Trump. Well, actually, uncommitted national said, we still oppose Donald Trump and we don't encourage anybody to vote third party. So it sounds like they're just saying, don't vote. So it'll well, be interesting to see what happens. But if there's an option to vote uncommitted, they're being urged to vote uncommitted. Uh, at this time, our movement cannot endorse uh, uh, Vice President Harris. That's, that's huge. Yeah. And I think, too, that a lot of people are going to say she's not giving her the answers. But I tell you what, you're going to hate Trump's answer mm -hmm. because he was yesterday speaking to a, uh, a Jewish American group and he was letting everybody know, I've been the best friend to Israel. I don't even think Trump's critics would say that. I have, and I can't believe that if you're an American uh, and you uh, of Jewish faith that you would not vote for me. He says right now he's only got 40 percent of the Jewish vote because how could I not have 100? I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.